Okay, hi. Um, my name is Jessica Tanusirivio. I am a Resource Global alumni now. <laughs> I actually graduated with a bachelor's in finance and business law, and then I went on to pursue a master's in international trade and commerce law. But I was really wrestling at that time, uh, wanting to go into the world of ministry. I wanted to serve full time within the four walls of the church. At school, like, because I was taking finance, like, we were taught to maximize profits and cut costs, right? That's like the goal of finance. And so I hated that because I felt like that's, that's so meaningless. Um, and so funnily enough, actually, in that like season when I had that existential crisis thinking about what the purpose of life is, I actually started failing my classes, isolating myself from like people and really rejecting outright like what God had gifted me through my family. So initially, my parents were quite surprised at my desire, <laughs> but thank God they did allow me to go to seminary. And in 2017, I graduated with a Master of Arts in Biblical and Theological Studies from Biola in LA. I wrestled a lot with the thought of what ministry meant. So I took this one course where we were supposed to be reading um, on the theology of work. We really thought about what it means to work onto the Lord. That all Christians, regardless of where the Lord places you in, um, we are called to serve, to serve the Lord and His people. Even God Himself worked. Like in Genesis, God was the one who created the heavens and the earth and human beings, right? And God called Adam um, to also work. And so I think that was the first time I really, really wrestled with the thought of what if my mission field wasn't the church. I got connected to one of the administrators at Biola. Apparently she shared a bit about me um, to one of the business professors at Biola. And he was particularly intrigued uh, because apparently he also had a seminary degree as well before. This professor called, is called uh, Dr. Robert Harp. I, I remember the first time we met, he just started asking like, so why are you in seminary? And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Like he genuinely wants to know my story. Throughout the course of like our friendship in those years, like he was always encouraging me to serve God, but he never confined serving God to the church. Um, and he was always so encouraging in regards to uh, me really pursuing God's heart and where He was leading me to. That really helped me, not because I had someone who told me what to do, but someone who was willing to listen and who was willing to wrestle with me with the things that I felt the Lord was leading me into. Every Christian is called to the same level of obedience, same commitment to take up your cross, to follow Jesus. And that can be in the world of work as well. And so for me, I came back home with that mindset and I realized that whatever the Lord has given me, even within my own family heritage and so forth, uh, even that in itself is God's gift and responsibility that I need to learn to steward. Particularly in my time at Resource Global, uh, within the program, I got paired up with Santa Veronica Colendum as my mentor. And one of the things that I likewise uh, again saw and am very deeply thankful for is the fact that I didn't get a mentor who was there to tell me A to Z, you know, like, oh, this is what you should do. Um, this is how I did it. That's not how she approached things. And I'm very thankful for that because she would start with asking me about my own story, about my own experiences, about my own thoughts, about things I was wrestling with, what I wanted to accomplish. I remember one particular uh, moment. I randomly messaged her at night just asking her about like impact work. She immediately responded and said, let's jump on a call tomorrow, which I was really like, oh, okay, like this woman's busy and she's really making time to just talk to me. She would make time 
throughout the past years, um, the Lord's been placing these figures in my life, just wonderful examples of people who would be so obedient to the call of God in their own lives and who didn't see their own work as something that was better or like more significant than others, but who would take the time to sow seeds into the lives of the younger generation. As I reflected back upon my life, I realized that I do value education as a person. And so I realized that there is a lot that can be done within the Indonesian education system. And so as I came back home and started doing my MA Ed, um, another thing that got highlighted was the need for special education in Indonesia. And so I decided, I declared my major to be focused on special education, so education for people with special needs. Uh, I'm currently doing my capstone project. I want to start developing a curriculum on teaching like women in the rural areas in Indonesia, contextually in Indo, to be able to identify children with special needs, but not just to identify, but to remove the stigmatism towards people with special needs, and also to be able to uh, provide some methods of intervention as well, maybe not super specific because there's a wide range of disabilities, but to be able to learn how are we supposed to intervene, especially like early intervention is very important for uh, special education. And so that's the curriculum that I'm hoping to develop. Currently, I oversee our CSR division within a MNC group. And so one of the things that we've started this year actually is to adopt a village every year. And so this year we actually adopted a village, but with the pandemic, um, a lot of our programs have been delayed. Uh, but one of the things that I want to incorporate into this Adopt a Village program is this educational aspect. I also am actually working on a project in Sumba as well called uh, Rumah Terang or House of Light. We rebuild a rural church and we also focus on like community development there. And when I shared these two projects with Tante Veronica, she actually posed a very like interesting um, idea to me as well. She was like, why don't you implement your curriculum project in these two projects? Um, one that's more like public and another one that's within a Christian community. And why don't you do your research there like in, for the longer run? And so like when she posed that idea for me, I was like, I love that. Um, I love that and I definitely would love to see how um, it would play out because for sure like um, even with the curriculum project that I'm currently designing, uh, a lot of it is based off what scripture says. For example, why do we need to remove stigmatism towards people with disability? Because Genesis 1.27 says that all men and women are created in the image of God. And so I think that's something that is very integral um, and built in into how this curriculum will be uh, designed as well. So uh, one of the things that I'm really grateful for is I think um, RG is such a good space where we meet like-minded believers in various spheres of places of work, you know. So, it's been really encouraging, particularly, for example, um, when we had our graduation session online, like everyone was just sharing about like their own journey within the program and also their action plan. And I thought that was really like encouraging to hear from different spheres. Um, and I loved it because I think that's exactly like how we as Christians are supposed to live, you know, like we should understand that the gospel does permeate into all these different spheres and our faith is not simply confined into our Sunday or weekend life. The Lord's really taught me what it means to be dependent on Him because I feel like ministry at work is a lot harder for me than ministry at church. So these past two and a half years has been really like a process of 
learning to trust him again and again like every day I think and it's just been such a humbling process for me.